<laughs> Big day out for Paul on Donkey. <laughs> Well, Paul. My guard. This is not your usual surroundings. No, not for you. It was for me one time. You see, this is the thing. So important, your Paul and I get talking, as we do. It's not always silage, silage, and Pottinger. No. You have a past life, and this is it. Yeah. If, and if I had listened correctly, you used to make that particular ski slope years and years ago. That's right. In 2010 and 11, that was my slope. I worked here in St. Danton with the snow groomers. I guess in England people call them the uh, peace bashers. Yeah. Is the word, or snow grooming in English, or Schneekatze auf Deutsch. And uh, yeah, this was one of my uh, former places of work. And you left this lifestyle for grass. <laughs> yeah. Well, I had, I started with grass, I guess, and I left grass for this and then I've come back to grass. Um, yeah, I, I worked in this industry for a, a good 15 years, Gareth. I worked for the manufacturer of the snow machines that we'll visit here now, um, in testing department, so field yes. testing, and also in demonstrations. Um, and we were literally up at the highest part of St. Valuga, or Valuga. Yeah. We were, we were at the top of Veluga in St. Anton and Albert. Uh, a lot of people will know St. Anton, famous, very famous ski resort for skiing and apres skiing and uh, a lot of snow and uh, yeah. But you've travelled all over the world doing this. Yeah, I have, luckily. I've been to many places, I guess, spent a lot of time in Russia, Kazakhstan, New Zealand, the United States. See, we always knew you were cool. We didn't realise this is why you were cool. Because you have to be a certain element of cool to work out here. Yeah, it's not easy to get into the industry, I guess, uh, in this level. And yeah, I was I was lucky as well. This you know. level? What yeah. does that mean? Well, I guess to end up working for the manufacturer of these machines and to be able to test the machines to the limit to make sure that they're fit for for uh, the customer because there's high demands, you have very steep slopes, you yeah. have a lot of danger involved and if the machine is not right it's uh, it's going to be a problem. And like it's, some of those, some of the slopes here are so steep that you literally, you hook a winch on yeah. and you work away with a winch, yeah. that's just to hold you on the slope, that's help right. you up the slope. Yeah, it's it's like turning on four wheel drive in a tractor you could say, it's, uh, like, yeah. yeah. I thought them machines would have went anywhere. No, they don't because with snow conditions and fresh snow it's a little bit tricky with traction going up and down. Yeah. Uh, so the winch has a pulling force of 4.6 tonnes and it's regulating, holding you back going down and helping you up. Without it it's not possible. But there's really only two main brands mm -hmm. and it's a bit like, would it be a bit like John Deere New Holland or you know? It's yeah, it's and worse. Our, it's yeah, worse. it's worse than that because there is only two. So like, it's it's not too many industries like that where there's only two manufacturers per se, and it's a fight at every level from marketing to every level, which makes it interesting. And which one of the two did you work for? Well, I worked for in the end Prenot, but I used both equally until I started for that company, which gave me the advantage when I went to work for them. I knew the competitor as well as their product which is important uh, in that role. And um, both, so the second one is probably maybe the better known of names, i.e. Like Piston Bully. Yeah, exactly, it is better known, I'd say, Piston Bully, it's a red colour, and it would be better known maybe from the people that don't know. Uh, in the industry, the pre not I mean, especially North America, is a strong brand, and in the last five, six, seven years, it's really... Yeah. But just, I'm just thinking in reference the ones that we've seen escape and go to push up clamps of maze. I've only I've only physically seen and been in a piston bully. Yeah. But it's been pushing me a silage application. Yeah. Yep. You know, uh, that sort of a thing. Yeah. And that is a big market for the second hands. The machines what are, are too expensive and too too much to buy it for that purpose. Brand new. Yeah. They have to be converted to cope with the temperature in summer and cooling hydraulics, but that's a good second hand market and 
yeah, it's more and more uh, machines heading that way. But the number of people in these slopes is mm -hmm. just incredible as we look out the window here. Look at that view, Paul. Yep, absolutely. Paul, how did you end up back in Ireland when you had this to look at? <laughs> Yeah, well, life takes a turn. You have family and things, and my son was born here in St. Danton. It's the place we first lived. My wife and our, myself, we worked here. And in the end, you have to make a decision with school and things, and when, when he became of school age, we felt that and family support that Ireland was a better option. We, we were, myself and my wife, the bones of 12, 14 years, I can't remember, away from home. And yeah, that's what, that's what brought me back. Uh, was family and yeah, yeah, school. Yeah. yeah, you'll come back though. Ah, you never say never. <laughs> you know, you always need a challenge in your life, and yeah, it's it's it was it was the biggest part of my life was in the ski industry, and I have a lot of connections and friends all over, and yeah, yeah. But basically, we're going to get off here at this stop, yeah. and we're going to go around to a workshop, exactly, and see some of the machines. Yeah. You'll be able to talk us yeah. around some of them a bit and better. This so. is, yeah. Another language. Kandaharish style. Yeah. Kandaharish style. Kandaharish style. Well, well it's first of all in the Bergen. Listen right? to him. Echt? Yeah, yeah. What language are you speaking, Paul? Uh, a little bit of German, but it's a uh, dialect here from St. Anton. <laughs> I have learned that. <laughs> I, 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 learned, I worked here with Oberman and he was speaking no. Uh, English and I was speaking no German and every night driving together Rush, we spoke Sport. a little bit of Russian together <laughs> yeah because he speaks Russian also and uh, me a little bit yeah peanut the best peanut the best is best peanut oh super super piston bully uh get it's middle. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's good. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Your tip from the factory is in the post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is the workshop. So the machines park up here every night. They park up here every night. They're kept inside. And then these guys just go out and nail it every night for a few hours. Yeah. And like Oban is, Oban has been driving from 30 years. He's drove everything. So whatever is uh, new in the day, he, he drives it. He, he can drive anything. And this is his machine. Yeah. Three years old. Yeah. Looks like it's brand new. Yeah. Yours is only one year old. So yours yes. looks like it's new because it looks like yeah. it's new. Yes. What's in here? MTU, which is Mercedes, the Detroit, and, and Rolls Royce mixed in one now, but it's Mercedes on the, that's written on the, on the block. And then Bosch Rexroth pumps. Everything is a pump. Uh, there is no mechanical drive. And horsepower wise? We think around 530, 550. We have to ask at the factory, and I think around 1,300 Newton meters. But that will depend on the elevation, because as the air gets thinner, you start to lose power. So at this level, with these machines, wouldn't be running at optimum? Uh, it wouldn't be far off with the, with the air temperature effects, but I uh, know, it, yeah, it's maybe five. It wouldn't be far off because they're designed to run at this altitude. Do they have to hook that winch on? Is that how that works? Yes. And Auburn makes the steepest slope in the area. It's the most traveled slope. It's famous to anyone that comes to St. Anton de Kandahar. The Kandahar. Uh, yeah, and from here he's able to drive down to the anchor. Yeah, and it has big bumps every day, like huge bumps because of a lot of skiers. And how much do you rely on the winch? It's not possible. It's not possible to on the wind, Kandahar. Yeah, it's possible. It's possible. Yeah, it's possible to go down and then around and down, but it's, to make it and keep the snow in place, you need the winch. There's 1.2 kilometers of cable sitting on the back, so that's... That's on the back? Yeah. Oh, so there's, so distance is no... Yeah, you've 1.2 kilometer from Gafar. And I or noticed, the the yeah. these are center cabs, the cab's further forward, yeah. this is it, so you sit in the middle. Yes. As I, I noticed in the piston bully next door, you sat here. That's right. It looks like a left-hand drive. Yeah, because you're sitting beside the engine in a piston bully. Oh, yeah. you have this further forward? This is further forward to give a central driving position. It's a USP of, of um, free knot. And that's why we have tracks here on the... You can see the tracks here, so you said you don't break these. Yeah. They give you grip. 
Yeah, that's to protect. You have ice cleats in ice, and you have these stabilizers for side slopes to hold you when you're going sideways and uh, not to destroy but, them here. <coughs> but there's a good mix. There's piston bullies, there's yeah, yeah. prenups. The, there's... Fl the flottish 50 50 young Gaffar order. Yeah. yeah. So it gives them a good uh, idea of what's best. And... As a light wolf. Yeah, light wolf. Light wolf, is that different types of? Yeah. Is that like an R series or an yeah, M series? Yeah, there's, there's or... three models basically uh, within pre -not, and this is the top one, and Light Wolf translates basically yeah, into, wolf. Yeah, into the wolf and the leader of the pack. Ah, yeah, wolf, yeah. that's you, Obram, yeah. leader of the pack. Tell me, Akko. Tell me, Akko. Dobro. Dobro, yeah. And they, so that's a good job, so there's no de-icing, thawing nah. machines. It's time to go, open the door, out, gone. Yeah. No yeah. messing. Yeah. Because that, it's all nighttime work as well. Yeah. It's all nighttime. Normalish in the knock get arbeited. Aber mit neue Schnee. It can't skip out in the morning. Yeah, normally in the night, but if, if it's snowing in the night, then they will come in early and work in the morning and uh, yeah. get the things ready and then they will open the lift afterwards. Bis 5 cm. Yeah. yeah. With this much new snow, then they have to make the slope again in the morning. Yeah. Uh, it's so, full. If, so if snow forecast is coming, they'll hold off. Yeah. And just go a bit yeah. later. Yeah. yeah. And then so in then the morning they need to get it done fast. So you need fast machines, fast drivers. Everything is to the limit because they need to open the lifts. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Want all piston right. bully. Yeah, all right. Three knots. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lethal. Look at this. And this is how they transport people around. 600 piston and bully and there's the cab so that's how they can move people up and down <laughs> this is the coolest workshop i've ever been in it definitely literally coolest look that's what we're looking at outside let the camera adjust absolutely and the guys they can they have sleeping quarters so they can stay up there and so this is one in the workshop. Don't know what it's in for. I've got the good old tunes on anyway. So this is a slightly different one. There's no winch on her. It sees what they call a park pro. So apparently that means there's a lot more finesse and movements here. Allows it more movement, back, forward, up, down. That's, that's probably for finishing to a very, very high, and that's, that's this man's machine. So it allows you to finish to a far greater level. Absolutely fantastic. So as you can see the difference, she's left-hand drive, new control, and then passenger seat on the other side. You actually two seats in there, they can squeeze a third person in. We are literally in the Alps on the uh, Square the Isle logo up there. We're on the Alps. We're in Italy. We are a few miles from Prenut who make um, peace bashers, snow cats in America. So we are just waiting to see one work in here. Of course, this work happens all late at night. So because um, obviously these machines can't be out on the slopes during the day, and then tomorrow we're going to. Uh, the pre nut factory. So we're just watching there. Uh, I think we're going to get into the machine now and get a look, but we're literally just watching one work on the slope there and they're having to use cables like winch cables to hold them and bring them up. But the lights they emit out of them things is unreal. Look at them coming. And that yoke there, you see that big thing there? That makes snow. It looks like the engine of a 747. So I'm assuming it's a mixture of water, air. Is that how that works, Paul? Yeah, exactly. Water and air and fans and speed, and then it blows out snow. 
create a different particle depending on what snow they want and by the time the water hits the ground it's as snow and they can make snow in up to maybe plus two or three degrees depending on humidity but they're vital to the success of the ski slopes absolutely and this is the mecca this is the home of snowmaking the concept was developed here and all the manufacturers are here in what we are calling south tyrol in the dolomites the dolomites which is a world heritage site here's our taxi now i'm sure ho -ho! a good piston bully that's a pretty nice <laughs> watch Man. <laughs> Maybe it's not our taxi. Yeah. So what we're doing here, Paul, we are literally shaping up the skis slope for tomorrow's skiers. Yes. And we're now in Italy. Yeah. And this part of the Dolomites is just known for the best ski slopes uh, possibly in the world. I mean, that's a big, a big statement, but. And our driver has a Mikhail Baylor. Yeah. <laughs> You're on holidays this week, Paul. You can't say anything. Oh, I'm, starting to I'm starting to doubt this guy. He's the boy. I've sat in here and this is just brilliant. Yeah, well, you just know else... you're in good hands when you step into a machine, Paul. You know when you're in good hands. Yeah, but everything else he has is putting or so. <laughs> you're on holidays, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> so, basically, this is the pre-nut. Yeah. This is 530 horsepower. Yes. He's roughing it up a wee bit here, shaping it. Yeah. But but behind us is like a funny par harrow. Yeah, exactly. And <clears throat> it leaves what we call there a corduroy. You can see the marks looking like corduroy. Yes. This allows the snow to set and tomorrow be firm, that it stays flat for as long as possible for the skiers. Um, and there's a lot of settings on that tiller at the back. Whoa, what's this? He just pulled around. Yeah, the winch. Because he was afraid to catch. Yeah, yeah, a bissel. Yeah. He'll make a little bit with the winch for us. Ah. Yeah. So now he's going to drive up here to an anchor. It's hidden in here. Maki, that's it. What's it? Yeah, logish. I get out now and hook it up for him, Garrett. Okay. I'm good that way. That's good the, to Kalega. That's your. That's the cab slag. Yeah. The cab slag's open in the gate. Yeah. They have, a, they have another <laughs> name for it in America. I won't say it on the. <laughs> well, it shouldn't be anchored though. Don't. The oh yeah. Show the sail yet. The cable is amazing, just nylon. So it's essentially pull the holders going down and pull us back up. Yes. He will regulate. There's two ways. Uh, he can regulate manually the pressure or automatic. So that cable's in there to an anchor point. Mm -hmm. That must be some anchor point. Yeah. But you know, in emergency situations, you can use trees, all different types, other machines. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> in complete control and would this slope be for advanced skiers Paul? Mm, the outside on the right hand side is quite not so steep but there yeah anything with a winch is challenging to ski normally but the winch really helps to get the snow back up Garrett yes uh, back up to where it came from pull the pull back up yeah here we'll see his pulling force. Yes. It's sixteen percent now. When he's turning, because it's easier to turn. Now it's climbing as we're climbing 30, 35, That's. <laughs> Four 
Funktioniert das automatic? Ja, ja. Yeah. Super, yeah. He using the automatic mode, even a good driver like this, because it works so well. So it's regulating now the pulling force. And that's something I would have worked on when I worked with this company. How much pulling force you're getting right now in the automatic mode. 59%? Six, yeah, yeah. 60% pulling Because force. if you use too much, you're breaking the cable or, and also you're taking power from the engine and performance and diesel and the, uh, the name, the idea is to use as little as possible. So the automatic function works on that? Absolutely. It allows the driver to focus just on the blade now. You see it bringing it's a up. It's quiet cab. It's a brilliant cab. Uh, Hans, we have to compliment them tomorrow. Would you see how much snow he was able to bring up? Yeah. This is one thing that this machine is brilliant at as well, Gart, is turning. That sharp turn. It's, it's a turning machine because of the suspension setup I showed, we talked about. See, he doesn't even use, he only uses minimum going down there now. And Look at that cable pulling away. And uh, what's really good about this winch also, Garrett, making the curve, because normally the cable wants to pull you that way. But with the Light Wolf, it's really good at making turns under the winch. And push all this snow, look. Yeah, there's a lot of snow getting yeah. pushed here. And that's what you can do with a winch that you can't do without it. Even. So if she hadn't that winch there, would she just be struggling a wee bit at this you, stage? You just have to keep that, what we call the blade, up. Yes. Barely touching the snow. And now, yeah. just to get this good or the, the good or what I think is good. Yeah, he is good. Take a lot of practice. It comes naturally more to some guys other than, you know, some things just come naturally. But now nah, this guy is, he's good. I can see it. You, you, I've sat, Garrett, you would not believe, with hundreds of drivers from all over the world. Seriously, Paul? Hundreds from, you name it, to Russia, to New Zealand, America, Serbia. And you will know after five seconds what you're dealing with. Literally, as soon as they move off, or even you'll know uh, how good they are. Yeah. But this isn't that steep in no. terms of what can be done. No, no, this is nothing. What this is good for now is maintaining this slope, using the winch once in a while to get the snow back up. But he was not going to use the winch tonight, only for us, he, he's using it on this slope. He was going to use it without winch. That's because he had his cabs lag. Yeah. <laughs> cabs lag. Hannes here has really demonstrated what a true operator is. Yes. He is just with slick precision. Is that the right way to word it? Yes, and efficiency. Still driving fast, not slow, and no mistakes. And yeah, there is the baby pre not guard. Okay. The, so that's not the wolf line? No, that's that's the husky. Oh, so that's okay, I he get it. He makes the smaller slopes and yes. he makes the uh, light. But, but yes, Hannes has 20 cows at home and uh, he makes all his own hay. And in the evening his dad is milking because he is here. And in the mornings then he milks. Six o'clock in the morning he's milking the cows. This is a real technical business, Paul. Mm -hmm. We've got literally I don't know if that's GPS guidance down here telling them the depth of the snow. We have all the snow making machines if needed. Hannes controls that all with his phone. So he's, not only is he operating the machine on the slope, he is working out what areas need a bit more snow. He can do that from his phone. <laughs> so he's not just a driver. No, and that's what's unique in the Alps here, I guess, a little bit. These guys are so talented, such skills. I'm sure he can fix any part of this machine as well, and then go home and milk milk the cows and do all that work as well. I just 
that just know? that just fascinates me. Yeah. With his Pottinger equipment and McKeel. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good combination, yeah. And um <laughs> like, I mean he really is rat like I mean if, without being smart, Paul, and I'm not saying I'm a driver, mm -hmm. but if I jumped on this here, it just wouldn't happen. No. How long would it take? Oh, Garrett, that's you know, everyone takes to it different and some people have the feeling quite fast but then a lot of it has to be experienced because you have to experience a certain situation to know how to deal with it so while you can be good for you know you have to be at it for a certain time and he was three years over on the other mountain before he was here so he is the experience from there as well yes and uh, so it's a combination of that but it is very unique here that uh, the operator is making the slopes to a high level, he's looking after the snow making, he's fixing the machine and then going home and doing another job as well. That typically wouldn't maybe be happening in some of North America or New Zealand, you're just maybe a, an operator of a machine and go home and that's it. You don't fix it, you don't do any other thing. But is that not a little bit like, um, you know, a farmer mentality and one of the reasons that manufacturers in Austria in particular thinking about Pottinger thinking about even the case New Holland factory they love farmers working for them because they do think outside the box farmers are great at that and they have some they have a lot more skill set to bring to the table absolutely it is absolutely like you say it and here's a perfect example of this man and you'll see it in our factory the guys that work there they all have the farms at home you know, they take their, their holidays, build them up in summer to make their own silage. Uh, and yeah. and uh, they have then, yeah, that mentality that's so, so beneficial to any industry, to be honest. And, uh, and that's why guys like Hans here are more than just a driver, because they have it in them Yeah. to be more than just a driver. Yeah. And they're appreciated for that. Exactly. And, you know, they are getting scarcer, these types of people, I feel. I, I believe and it's great to see that they're still around some you know because not everyone wants to be up here in the night I suppose I uh, would yeah and me too <laughs> there's something there's something know, magical about yeah, what we're doing you're taking a mess and making it perfect again and yeah you're also in such a machine with such control and um, yeah absolutely guard We have a little steep section, so you just has to be prepared, but it's not a problem. It's not. Yeah. With, with fresh snow there, a lot of fresh snow, you're probably going for a slide without the winch in that sort of steepness. But, but that's okay. Yeah, it's also a bit of fun as well. We don't mind the wee slide. No. No. And that essentially is, you know, What's made look easy now, the controls don't look easy, Paul. No, and there's a lot going on in the screen because, like, the tiller, or power harrow, as you were saying, at the back, there's a huge amount of settings in that as well. Even as we're driving, he's constantly adjusting it, the angle. I mean, it's there is a lot going on. That's well, why it's not boring. As he turns to the right now a little bit here, he has to bring that tiller the same angle with them absolutely or else it would be like turning your power horror uh, leave them, around leave the corner miss. and also okay. he's adjusting the down pressure of yeah. the tiller and also the speed it's turning and also there's a chamber that holds snow and it's different going up or downhill and yeah flaps out flaps in absolutely <laughs> as you see he is the, the, like there's some movements made and a shift in this machine incredible and then he's steering with his hand here. Yeah, so he's slowing one track down and speeding the other one up and slowing down the so, forward speed with his foot. So there's no such thing as a steering wheel in these babies? It is an option, but people find it less and less. Uh, the demand was more for the steering levers. Yes. Um, in North America, they have a totally different driving concept where they set a hand throttle and they drive it more like a bulldozer. Or, and uh, that's different driving style than, than here. Um, you, you lose a lot of the dynamic of the foot pedal with driving on the hand throttle. The foot pedal has a lot of control in it. It's not just controlling the engine speed. It's opening and closing pumps. And um, 
but that's oh. where the steering lever so your from. your foot pedal is it more like a drive pedal as we yeah. would talk about in a tractor like a very old drive pedal exactly and it's opening and closing the pumps as well as well as adjusting the engine speed and is, is that because it's working that off the speed not the rpm yeah and it, okay and you were partly to do with that being designed yeah we worked a lot on the foot pedal uh, dynamics <laughs> we had a great team when i was there and that was really rewarding work to improve such topics like that to make them more adaptive more dynamic it wasn't just me or anything there was a team of guys and they're still there and they're still improving this machine every day well i don't know about you paul but i'm hungry now yeah and there is one great pizzeria there that's where we're going now we started this morning with Hannes' farm and that was just incredible, breathtaking views. And then we went to the prenup factory, we got a little bit of an insight into the business which historically to now is three brands merged into one when it comes to the snow cat as they call it here, which was prenup and that Bombardier in uh, Canada so that's so the middle version of these is still made there the Bison and then we have what was the other brand in the middle Leitner Leitner mm -hmm. who does all the ski lifts and all as well that's right so the gondola that we went up in earlier was up was made was a Leitner <laughs> so so these guys have it pretty well sewn up within reason that's right yeah their 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 goal is to be able to supply everything that makes a ski area so yeah. from the snow making to the lift to the preparation. It's absolutely fantastic. And on all those th uh, three machines that make up the arsenal of, of prenup now, um, you have the husky, which is the baby. Yeah. You know, and to put it in the R language, that's like your 5R. <laughs> yeah. John Deere. And uh, then you have the bison, which is made in Canada with a cat engine. And it is your 6R. And then what we were spending tonight and last night in was the Daddy, the Light Wolf, which is her. And that is a 13 litre MTU engine. And we all know MTU now is a mix between Mercedes, Daimler, and now there's some link in with Rolls Royce. It's very complicated, but it's, it's a big engine. And all that engine does, and that's only when I seen it in the factory, being put on the machine you get the sense of all that engine does is drive pumps yeah and there is so much software to regulate those pumps that everything runs smoothly because if, when you have a cable out and for example if the cable goes in the air it's not on the snow well then that puts a extra force on the pump which can uh, change the whole drive setup yeah. so it's constantly regulating those pumps to stay sta stable there's huge uh, software involved Dan Foss, might I add? Yeah. I noticed that bit too. <laughs> yeah, it was an Eaton Hydraulics, which has huge control in the valves. Yeah. With amazing control. It was, but then Dan Foss has bought them over as That's such. Right. So it's, you know, yeah. so we're still looking at that. And what I, what I noticed was what sets the prenup apart from the rival. Yeah. And I can't say rivals, because <laughs> yeah, right. you really have to say rival. Yeah. And I mean, that's the piston bully, yeah. is the rival. What really sets it apart is some of the technology. I mean, they have a system in the tracks here that you can effectively, a suspension, you can lift it up and lower it down. So you can put more of the track on the ground, or you can have less of the track yeah. on the ground. And that's done with two hydraulic rams. And whilst we were running there, because the snow's not great in the mountain at the minute here. Mm -hmm. He was running front down, yeah. back up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I knew he was doing that. Yeah, because also climbing is not an issue. And also when you run the back up, it's interesting. The tracks leave the snow in a different way. They're gradually coming out yes. and it makes it easier for the tiller. When the track is fully down, it comes out in a curve. And with this type of snow, it makes it hard to tilling. But going back to the point, yes, it's a USP of this machine since 1995 from the Leitner company. And basically, yeah, it makes the track short or long depending on conditions and with the joystick, you have that control. And the second thing that sets this machine apart is seat position. 
yes. in the middle of the cab further forward than the competition, which means you're looking right down in your work, left and right. And that's pretty cool. Now, I did, did spy earlier that the smaller one, the Bison, is a left-hand drive as such. But then it's a lot smaller. Yeah, and I think it might be something to do with the size of the cab that it's not possible to have a centre position and passenger seats yeah. in that. But I'm sure if you really wanted it, <laughs> it can happen. And there's one other mm, USB t on this compared to the competitor just at the moment, and it's the way the tiller can steer on the back. Unbelievable. It it's like a... It's like a trailer. Yeah. I, I, it's like a tractor and a trailer going round. So when you're going round the slope, you literally, he hits a button, puts it into, I'm calling it, in my language, a float. Yeah. And it, it steers round with it, mm. which makes the little lines, because there's these little lines come behind the tiller. And the machine, Paul, is 530 horse. Mm -hmm. This here moves in every single way that you can deceive. 12 ways, I believe. 12 yeah. ways. What width is it? It's 4.8 meters working width, which is 30 centimeters bigger than anything else in the market. That's the, the working width. But the blade, of course, is wider than yeah. the tracks because it allows you to cut a bank without driving on the hitting it with the tracks. And the teller is a little bit like uh, an upside down <laughs> power uh -huh. harrow. Yeah. It's just sort of spinning around and around. But the factory was really cool to see as well. I know it's more of an assembly line, but when you see the the, the metal chassis, it's not unlike any other factory, like where you see tractors or diggers or anything coming together, mm -hmm. and then they start to put the engine on, and you see the cooling system has to go up the side mm -hmm. because the way they position the cab and then in at the rear, especially if they're putting the winch system on, they physically cannot make that happen. Mm -hmm. And they even have an electric one now, but it's a baby one. That's right. But its downfall is three hours maximum range. Yeah. Andreas earlier was explaining to us that they are obviously, like every other manufacturer on the planet, toying, practicing, learning, developing <laughs> hydrogen. Yeah. All of the above. Mm -hmm. Two different formats, mm -hmm. combustion engine and the more traditional way of thinking. Mm -hmm. um, fuel cell, etc. So it was a real insight to a completely different world. Absolutely, and of course, it's a big topic within the green outlook on life when you're in the mountains, and they have to be seen to do it, even though the numbers of machines and the turnover budget-wise doesn't allow much development in that direction, yeah. but they have to be seen to be green because of global warming. And but, but Andreas so also made a point. I mean, the, emission, the emissions that these machines are given off and the reduction in the NOx gases and all of the rest of it at, at tier five is absolutely... Art. It's unbelievable, like, and it, it's, it's nearly a joke. Yeah. Uh, uh, to the point that... I should when, have put my coat on. Yeah, it is a cold. <laughs> but in China, uh, what, in certain parts, the air coming out of the exhaust is cleaner than what was going into the engine. Like, it's, it's serious, the level of cleanness these engines have now. For but to sum up, any farmer boy, anybody who likes machines, a snow cat, what do we call them at home again? Uh, the Peace Bashers a in the peace UK. Peace Basher in the yeah. UK. Yeah. Well, I'm in. Yeah. Hold on, I'm still in Italy, am I? Yeah. But I'm almost in Austria. Yeah. <laughs> Schnee <-Katze. laughs> There's a snow cat here. And um, also the company, Prenup, which I couldn't believe. They have a lot of different, the four main machines in there. Mm. So they work with like big, I don't know what you call them, real industrial looking mulchers type of thing. Mm. They work with um, Panther Range. Mm. That's like a mobile dump, dump truck. truck on tracks. And then there's this other big yoke that goes in and cuts down trees. <laughs> yeah. It's made in America or somewhere. Yeah. So it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mighty impressive, cool company. And thanks very much, Paul, for bringing us here. Oh, no Having the fun on the machine, seeing Hannes and his farm made it for me because, as I said earlier on, and you've said this to me before, do we need it all when you see how some people can make it work mm -hmm. in a lot humbling, a lot more humble settings? It's, it's, it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. But to see a company like this, but now they still cost a bit. Somewhere, <laughs> somewhere between half a million euro and 600,000, I think, is mm -hmm. 
Mm. Depending on how good we are at driving a bargain. Yeah, but when you put expensive compo components, Bosch Rexroth, MTU, Pininfarina design in the cab, Recaro seats, it doesn't long about adding up. The seats are unreal. They are mighty. Yeah, but they need to be, because you spend uh, long hours, you yeah. know. Right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed the video. Absolutely loved being here. Had a great couple of days with Paul. He, uh, he speaks Dutch some version of it. <laughs> I didn't even know this. Everybody here that I met was telling me like how good a driver he was, even though I kept saying no, he's crap. Like I really didn't realize the other life that you lived. Yeah, I guess, you know, like I say, it was 15 years of my life. I've been very fortunate, you know. It's given me a different perspective, like you saw today briefly. And uh, I've met lots of great people and it's a pleasure to come back here with you and show you some of it, because it's very difficult for me to explain yeah. to people. My own father <laughs> thought I was cleaning the roads out here with a truck. <laughs> he couldn't understand the concept, so well, it's I know, a pleasure to ring you. I know when I ever call back to a company such as Pottinger or SIP mm. as we were last mm. year, and when I see their Alpine range, I will give it <laughs> a second look yeah. because we often bypass it That's right. and don't think yep. much about it. Yep. And maybe there's a trip back here in summer to see Hannah's Anything. making his grass. Oh, that would be absolutely we'll brilliant. Put it all in perspective. Well, anyway, we're away. And remember, everybody, it's okay to not be okay, but you couldn't not be okay out here. <laughs> oh, I let in the ropeways. Yeah. There it is. So they made that bit too. That goes all the way up there. Unreal. <laughs>